Welcome to the Monday, March the 15th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let staff and members introduce themselves by speaking their names. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Hannah Smith, member. Ben Cheney, member. Steve Everett, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Tammy Burry, recording secretary. Okay, I would like to let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Awesome, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen for those who are watching from home. All right, so for those watching from home um, via Orca Media, if you would like to log in, you can use this Zoom link here. Um, you can also call in and use this meeting ID to be able to talk. You just won't um, be on video, but you'll be able to pop in. Um, if you have problems accessing the meeting, please email me here. I'll keep be, have my email open during the meeting so that I can tell if anybody's trying to get in or if anybody's just having problems. Um, so, uh, this Zoom meeting is being recorded as well as streamed live via Orca Media um, and turning on your video is optional. All public testimony will be taken verbally and the chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, and the, the Zoom chat will be added to the public record if it's used. Please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This reduces background noise. And if someone calls in by phone, you can use star six to mute your phone in a way that lets us all see that you're muted. Um, uh, right now we just have applicants. So I'm gonna skip over the stuff about raising your hand for public participation at this point. Um, but if we have somebody log in, a member of the public, I'll go through that at that point. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. Um, and if you're having connectivity issues, try turning off your video or closing other applications on your phone or computer. Um, if anybody from home or wants to see the documents that we're looking at today, you can use this link. This is also good if you're having trouble with share screen, you can download the documents here. Um, Sky, I think you should already have those. And please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote. And I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Do I hear a motion from any of the committee members to approve the proposed agenda? This is Martha. <clears throat> I'll move to approve the agenda. I'll second. So that was the second? Yep. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't hear it very well. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Yes. Anna. Ben. And Steve. Okay, the agenda is approved. Unless anybody else has any other comments beforehand, we can move to the first application for 54 Main Street. Owner, Overlake Park, applicant, Alpenglow Fitness. Is someone there to describe your application? Is that me? <laughs> yes. Hi, Hi Sky. Hi. Um, yeah, we're just basically looking to put a sign up out front um, using the same. We're actually repurposing the sign from the previous business when it was Zenith and just repainting. Um, and it's just going to have the name of our business and be located above the windows. Uh, 
How high are the letters in the sign? How, how tall are they? I'm looking. I can pull up the share the application if that would help, Sky. That yeah, that'd be great. I don't have it all memorized. Okay, yep, yeah, no worries. Okay. Let's see, do we have, do, 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 do. I don't know if we have. Yeah, I don't think they asked that, to be honest. I think it was more about the shape and the size of the sign itself of the. Um, it looks like they're gonna be, what, a pro just over 11 inches maybe, if this line is 11 and a quarter. So then the letters look to be roughly that same height. I think it says on the right hand side, vinyl die cut lettering is, is, is that 13 millimeters? I can't yeah, that's, the, that's the thickness. Oh, um, okay. But yeah, I think you're right. It's, it's about the um, height of that sort of like middle, like below and above the indents. Yeah, so about 11, just over 11 inches. And is there a, I'm assuming the background is just a solid black. And what color are the letters? Blue. It's like a periwinkle-ish blue. Okay. Just for information's sake, the lighter color of the letters gives you more contrast and becomes more readable. So feel free to go as light as you like. Okay, great. Are you doing the building yourself, Sky, or somebody doing it for you? Um, so the sign is already, the wooden piece already exists because it was from the previous business. Um, and a friend and I are sanding and painting and then I'm making the letters on a die cut machine. Okay. Um, and then, so they have a adhesive background and then I'll probably do like a thin clear layer over them to secure them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do any other committee members have any comments, questions, or suggestions? Are you needing, this is Liz. Um, I just noticed, you know, the background behind the sign is white, I guess, right? Um, and do you have to paint or do anything to that or just leave it? I don't know. I, it's like an off white. Um, uh -huh. I'm not the building owner. I asked about it, maybe power washing that, but I'm not sure at this point if they're planning on doing anything or I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not planning on doing anything. Okay. Yeah. It looked like maybe it maybe needed washing or something. I mean, it would improve it, but it's, it's fine. Yeah. I'm Thank you. Happen. If you have a color match for the paint, if it needs a little more than power washing, it might be worthwhile. And, and again, that's just a maintenance issue. You don't have to get the approval for that. But if you can match the paint, it might be a good time if the weather cooperates. It might be a good time to paint just behind where your sign is going. That way, if somebody else paints it, they're not getting paint all over your sign. In other words, if you get a chance to paint it before mounting the sign, that's a great opportune time. Yeah, okay, great. That's great to know so I don't have to apply for anything differently to do that. Yes, again, that's just a maintenance issue as long as you're not changing the color or, or anything with the background. Great. Any other comments or suggestions from committee members? If not, we can go to the criteria sheet. There's some criteria that apply to any of the applications. And for the sign, there's, there are two under all projects, 
One is exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristic, characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Additions to existing buildings shall, be, shall respect and be compatible with the size, scale, materials, detailing, and overall character of the primary building. Additions shall not obscure or undermine the essential form and character of the original building and should reflect the additions period and style as appropriate, and that's acceptable. Number two, existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of its time, place, and use. Changes that create a false sense of historical development, such as adding conjectural features or architectural elements from other buildings shall not be undertaken. New construction additions and alterations shall be of their own time and shall not create a false sense of historicity. Acceptable. And then under the criteria for signs, one is the size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the building and structure of the site and surrounding properties, acceptable. Number two, where appropriate signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures acceptable at this location for the sign. Number three, if a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs. That's acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. It is centered over your space, acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials of the building. That's acceptable. In masonry buildings, fasteners shall be in the mortar joints. That's not applicable here since it's a wooden sign bin. Sign design color and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for the existing and new buildings acceptable. Sign supports shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves. And the sign band, that's a perfect application point. And again, the only recommendation based on your proposed lettering is you can lighten the coloring of the letters themselves if you choose to achieve more contrast and more readability. And do I hear a vote from the committee members by speaking your name for approval of the sign? This is Martha. I say yes. Liz, yes. Anna says yes. Ben says yes. And Steve says yes. So the sign application is approved. Thank you very much for coming for the application and good luck with your project. Thanks very much. Have a good night. Okay, thank, thank you. you. This, has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes and are there any questions or comments? Uh, Steve, the, Steve, the, this is Martha. The, yes. way that, the way that I remember our voting on the numbers in terms of um, the building on Stonecutter's Way, he was not going to put the numbers on the side of the building, is that right? Yes, I believe yeah. we, we recommended that he put the, the numbers on either end of the building next to the entrances. Did we recommend that or did we say that, that it should not be on the side of the building? Well, the, basically, the rec it's a recommendation, which means that's what you're telling them to do versus an option. Okay, okay. I, yeah, well, I took it as, I mean, the way I, we, I use the, the terms here, recommendation means that's something the DRC has said you need to do. If it's an option, they have the choice. If it's a recommendation, it ends up being a, a permit condition. Okay. I just needed to clarify that. But other than that, I think they're fine. Okay. If everyone agrees to hear a motion to approve the minutes. This is Martha. I move to approve the minutes. I'll second. 
Oh, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> go ahead, Hannah. I'll second it. And all in favor, speak your names. Martha. Liz. Hannah. Ben. And Steve. So the minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business at this time? Yeah, um, Meredith, the, it says here next meeting is April 5th. Um, I had us down for the 29th. Is that incorrect? Uh, well, we have two. Oh, yeah. No, that's incorrect. We just have two meetings a month. OK. OK. No, I'm not, I'm not making DRC meet three times. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Um, this is Martha, I'll move to adjourn. I'll second, second that one. All in favor of adjourning, speak your names. Martha. Liz. Hannah. Ben. And Steve. The meeting is adjourned. Wow. <laughs> wow. You can get you can get out in sunlight. <laughs> yes. Enjoy it, everybody. And uh, I will see you in, I guess it's three weeks instead of two weeks. Yeah. Yes. Good night, folks. By the time I see you again, it should be warmer. Yes. Yeah. That'd well, be nice. <laughs> Bye. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.